Link to the Past is the epic tale of a boy's journey to smash some especially stanky gash. This incarnation of the Aaron Boy of the Goddess is a fairly regular guy who even keeps pot next to his bed for a little wake and bake first thing in the morning. One night, he sneaks out of bed to follow an uncle so lazy that he gave up on saving Princess Zelda in the first room of the tutorial area. And for his part, Link doesn't even try to help the fat fuck. Probably because Link wants that one room shack and the buggery stained bed within it all to himself. After dodging some guards who are apparently both near and far-sighted, Link comes across the Boomerang, an ancient relic that stuns enemies on contact because frankly, they are just incredulous that someone actually threw a goddamned boomerang at them. After a solid two minutes of Australian shit posting, Link encounters Princess Zelda, a salacious slut who wears a flowing skirt, her panties on her head, and walks navel deep in raw sewage during her escape. As a result, her pussy is so pugnaciously pungent that when the priest partook of her pervasive prolapsed pelvis perfume, he passed away post haste. Which isn't particularly portentous, the church he led worshipped a graven image, and behind that blasphemous golden icon was a room full of snakes. And frankly, if Zelda wanted to speak in tongues while handling serpents, I have a scaly, slime-covered creature of my own she could handle, if you know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about my penis, because having her tug on it like a gibbering retard trying to pull on a push-to-open doorknob would probably be pleasurable for me. After leaving Zelda in the most obvious of hiding places, Link embarks on an amazing quest to collect three Chuck E. Cheese coins that he can later exchange at the courtesy counter for a sword that has a baggy t-shirt for a hilt. To attain these all-important pogs of destiny, Link explores three incredibly dangerous locations that include enemies so harrowing that it pains me to recall them. In the Eastern Palace, Link encounters sleepy weebles and slutty skellies that want your nut in their bellies. How do I know they yearn for the worm? Just look at how they try to entice Link to jump their bones. After getting more black balls shoved in your face than Madonna in the 90s, and bullseyeing some depth perception lacking lobsters, Link takes on blow-up dolls that try to booty slam him to death, followed by the most dangerous enemy of all, Thrasha Halasha Shamalema Ding Dong, a brown-fingered hermit who gifts kinky red leather boots to the first little boy who entered his hut since the sex offender database went online. Luckily, those boots also enabled Link to sprint away with his bootiest Maximus mostly intact. Emboldened by this victory, Link presses onwards towards then through Kakariko Village, where he meets such wonderful characters as a little boy who blew because he needed the money! A crazy motherfucker who seals his brother behind a wall, like the guy from Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amatelado. A little gay boy who spent so much time bug chasing that he is dying of AIDS at the age of 10. A snitching slut in a burka who better ask the Dimension Hopping Boy how he runs so goddamn fast, because when I catch the bitch, I'ma cleave her ass in two. A poo in the loose salesman who sold off his last bottles because they reminded him too much of a turlet, a culture-appropriating, self-proclaimed blacksmith who is honestly a beige smith at best, and worst of all, the physical embodiment of the future Jews want for Hyrule, a gay black clansman who is so woke he charges 30 rupees just to talk to him. Luckily, in a world with so few of the people God chose to rape and pillage the rest of us, coins can be found just lying around unfilched, and the land is so prosperous that the king was able to stock his garden with gigantic tasty cake butterscotch crimpets. Mm -hmm. With the ancient knowledge contained in the mythical book of Medora the Explorer, Link is then able to slip past the litigious Sandman, attorneys at law, in order to attain the legendary white power glove, 
which allow this wielder to get a low interest loan from any bank and grab an eight ball of that pristine china white to get their rocks off without fear of repercussions from the law. After killing some worms by dragging his bare ass across a shag carpet, Link proceeds towards and through the Death Mountains, where he meets some bucktooth tree fuckers who will go on to impregnate a particularly slutty Dutch elm, thus leading to the conception of the Kokiri tree, as well as an old pervert with a mirror strapped to his shoe who tosses the mirror aside in disgust after getting into the light and seeing Link's disgusting balls. After watching a demon kick a little boy in the balls, Link receives a dose of highly concentrated testosterone in the shape of a pearl, which fixes the mental problems brought about by his uncle's flippy fingers, thus preventing him from becoming a degenerate furry ever again. The Death Mountain dungeon is especially perilous due to the holes in the floor and the furious bumper squids, though to be perfectly honest, if I wanted to wrestle down a gigantic fuzzy wiggle worm, I'd ignore those court orders and go back to free balling when I jog. At this point, the writing of the game becomes a little suspect. Ganon jumps out of a wizard's butthole in order to kidnap Princess Zelda and six other sluts. And instead of going to the past as the title would suggest, he pulls Link into a nightmarish realm, devoid of the light of God. Link must then jump between dimensions to rescue a septology of slags encased in crystallized monster cum who have been fucked so hard by multi-pronged hexagonal demon dicks that their used up cunts have been core sampled out with garden weasels and left in the dungeons to air out between uses. So frankly, A Link to Camden would have probably been a more honest title for this game. Though it's not all bad. I like any game that not only allows me to catch little girls in a butterfly net, but that they also respect the validity of my catch instead of screaming for their fathers. At this point, Link must tread carefully. Though the combat is verse a tile at times, the bag of dick monsters, fried chicken in a mask, ice covered eye, lint covered eye, eyes covered eye, Rock with more turtle heads poking out of it than a five-ass Mexican miles away from a toilet after Taco Tuesday, Butterfly that slaps Link in the face with his surprisingly large amount of pricks, as well as the scariest encounter you can have with a woman in a bedsheet that doesn't involve her husband angrily kicking down the bedroom door to announce that his AIDS test came back positive, can all tear Link's ass to shreds. Luckily, Link is not alone. Help this dirty old witch jam some rotting mushrooms up her disgusting snooch and she'll quiff out the magical dust. Toss some coins at this slut and she'll make you quiver, I, I mean, increase the size of your quiver, and give any attention to this body image positive bag of shit who turned this entire pond into fatty bobatty soup and she'll upgrade your sword. Sacred objects scrounged from dungeons will empower Link to melt bitches with his fiery rod, smack wieners in the dark like his uncle taught him to, and perhaps most impressive of all, with the cane of Somalia, Link can conjure blocks composed of highly compressed genocide victims to activate about five switches in the entire game. After an epic showdown with Man Bat Pig in the basement of the Luxor Casino, Link is finally able to make Hyrule great again then seal up the master sword before that stank bitch Fi can awake and ruin the game with her jabbering.